Okay, so here we go. Now we had uh, some problems that are gonna be really, really fun to look at this because I know you see this and say, oh, A is not equal to one. I hate these types of factoring problems. So that's okay, that's why we're gonna do it. I'm gonna show you step by step how to go through each one of these and I'll show you two different ways to do it. Um, obviously the fastest way to do would be the factoring in your head, but I wanna make sure I go through this step by step so you can at least understand um, what exactly we're doing. So before we even get to that point, we always wanna look at can I factor out a GCF in my numerator or my denominator. And unfortunately, in both these cases, they do not share a GCF. Then the next thing I want to do is always look for special factoring techniques. And unfortunately, I do not have any special uh, factoring techniques I can use. There's no perfect square trinomials or difference of two squares or two cubes. So I'm going to have to go back to the nice nitty gritty and factor. So you notice that I have my two um, polynomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So to do this, I'm going to factor here. Let's do the numerator. And let's go ahead and factor the denominator. Now I'm going to do this two different ways. However, the first part is always going to be the same. When factoring a trinomial, when your a is not equal to 1, we need to make sure that we determine what our not just c is, but a times c is, and then what our b is. So we need to figure out the value of a times c and then b. So for my numerator, a times c is going to be equal to a negative 24. And my b is going to be a positive 10. My a times c over here is, for my denominator, is going to be 6 times 6, which is 36, and then a positive 13. All right, so I'm not going to write out all the factors because I am going to try to speed this up a little bit for you. So when we look at this, we just need to figure out, all right, well, all the factors are negative 24. So since it's a factor negative 24, we know that one of the factors has to be negative. So what two factors multiply to, well, we already know the value, the factors that multiply given to 24, but out of those factors, which ones add up to a positive 10? Well, our case in this, our factors in this case are going to be positive 12 and negative 2, because they multiply to give me negative 24 and add to give me 10. Over here, you say, what two values multiply to give me 36 but add to give me 10? Now, both the factors have to be positive, because rather than just multiplying to make us positive, they have to add to give us positive as well. So they both can't be negative. And those two factors are going to be 9 and 4. All right, so the first way we're going to do this is we're just going to simply rewrite it by using our new terms. So I'm going to, I can rewrite this as 8x squared. And then rather than using 10x, I'm going to use my two factors to represent that. So I could say plus 12x minus 2x minus 3. OK? So all I simply did is instead of writing 10x, I wrote 12x minus 2x. It's the exact same thing. But the reason why I do that is because now we can use the technique of factoring by grouping. And factoring by grouping we like because what we're going to do is we're going to split it up into two different groups. And then we're going to factor by the GCF. And a lot of us are used to factoring by GCF because that's what we first learned uh, when learning how to factor. So I look at my first two terms and I say, all right, what do those two terms have in common? We could say they both share an x and then also a 4. So if I take a 4x and I factor it out, I'm going to be left with a 2x plus 3. Then over here, I can say, all right, well, I want to, whatever I want to factor out to this, I want it to be the same as that. And I'll explain that in a second why. So you say, what can you factor out? Well, you can factor out a negative 1. So when I factor out a negative 1, I'm left with a 2x plus 3. All right. So what we did is we determined, we said, all right, what is the GCF of this first binomial? And then we factored out the GCF of the second binomial. So when doing factoring by grouping, you do a GCF first, GCF second, and then you find, say, all right, what is the GCF then of everything? And you notice that this, this whole expression, this binomial, the GCF is going to be 2x plus 3. So now you factor out the 2x plus 3. And when you factor out the 2x plus 3, you're left with a 4x minus 1. So therefore, that's going to be now my new numerator, which is in factored form. 2x plus 3 times 4x minus 1. OK, so now we need to determine what the denominator is. And to do the denominator, I'm going to use the box method. And what the box method does is it goes by the understanding of multiplication creates area. right? If you look at this. If I say this times this gives me that, which is true, right? That's what we did in the, by factoring by grouping. 
Well, you can understand if this is the length, this is the width, then this would represent the area. So let's just create a nice little box. So what we're trying to do in is if I'm given an area, we're trying to work backwards and say, all right, what were the length and the width? What were the two values that we had to multiply to give us that area? So, so far in our area, we know that we have a 6x squared and a positive 6. But we have two boxes. Where, which one are we going to put the 13x into? Well, that's where this comes into play. Just like how I rewrote our middle term here, I can rewrite my 13x as 9x and 4x. All right? And that helps us fill in our boxes. Now we just need to determine what are the lengths of the box that create that area. So. Um, I'll just, go, I'll just show you a little guess and check on why um, some things work and why some things don't. So let's look in the upper left-hand box. We know that 6x times x gives us 6x squared. However, 6x times what gives us 4x? Well, that's going to start getting into a fraction, right? We don't want to deal with fractions. All right. And what happens if you do it the other way? Well, x times 6x squared, yeah, that gives us there. And x times 4x would be a positive 4. However, 6x times what gives us 9x? Again, it's another fraction. So that's not going to work. Now, I know that the other two factors of 6x could be uh, 3, 3x, and 2x. However, notice that 3x is going to have to multiply by a fraction to give us 4x. So let's rewrite them the other way. All right, 3x times 2x gives us 6x squared. 2x times what gives us 4x? Well, that's going to be plus 2. And then over here, 3x times what gives us 9x? So that's going to be plus 3. So therefore, now those are my two factors. So I can rewrite them as 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. And there you can see that I have um, a binomial divided by the same binomial, which will give result into 1, leaving me with a simplified rational expression of 4x minus 1 divided by 3x plus 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify a rational expression by using your AC method to, uh, to factor and then simplify. Thanks.